really we're in the middle of a pandemic which is affecting every industry and company around the world. If you imagine this situation happening even uh, 15 years ago, it would have been much more serious. How would people have worked at home uh, without all the tools that we take for granted these days for remote working, things like video conferencing and high-speed internet and so on. 5G technology is really the next step in the evolution of cellular communication, not just for personal devices, but I think much more broadly than that, 5G brings a lot of benefits to the industrial and manufacturing worlds as well. If you think about the smart factory, for example, where production flexibility and rapid response to data is very important, you can set up a 5G network to connect all of your machines, robots, and guided vehicles, where each of those has some type of sensor or Internet of Things device attached to it. There's also this concept of remote surgery or telesurgery, where a doctor or surgeon can be hundreds or even thousands of miles away from the patient and can operate on that patient remotely. Anyone who follows the automotive industry knows there's an awful lot going on around autonomous driving, vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communication through 5G will be a central part of the future of autonomous driving. From the consumer side, you will see some upgrades, certainly in terms of the download speeds and connection reliability on your phone, particularly if you're in a dense environment like a city center or a stadium. A feature of 5G is just the sheer density of connections it can support within a certain square mile area, for example, significantly higher than in previous generations. So I think there are many benefits of physics-based simulation, and it can help engineers and designers in the 5G area achieve their KPIs and product timelines, from the supplier end of things all the way up to the OEMs. So we all know that a modern smartphone is pretty packed with technology. There's not a lot of space. Um, there are a lot of antennas. And to fit a whole new generation of solid technology into that space is quite challenging. So what simulation can do is it allows you to create a virtual model of the whole device. So you can put all the components in, you can drive them correctly with the right circuitry, and then you can run a simulation to see how they're going to perform in that real working environment. So not just the antennas in isolation, but in their real actual uh, operating environment. Along with all the antennas, all the other materials, the screens, the plastics, the metals, and so on. So that's the electromagnetics capability, but we also have world-class structural capability for drop tests, for example, as well as fatigue and thermal tools. So having all of that physics capability, including the domain interactions within the company, gives us a great ability to understand the challenges that each design or engineering group might face. I think there's many different areas where we can leverage simulation and many opportunities for companies to exploit this technology for their own purposes. For people who are new or haven't used simulation for a while, I think they'd be pretty astonished at what's possible now. 